Nigeria's Federal Inland Revenue Service has announced that it collected over 10 trillion naira in tax, this, uh, in revenue or taxes, tax revenue rather, last year. This is the highest revenue intake in its history. Now, what was responsible for this feat? Stay with us to find out. January Cervical Cancer Awareness Month will have a guest in studio to enlighten us on this disease that presents a significant public health threat to women on the African continent. And we have a look at uh, today's newspaper headlines to take some of the important ones with analysis coming away in our press. back with the program plus TV Africa's The Breakfast. My name is Kofi Bartels. A beautiful, beautiful uh, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, reaching you live from our studios right here in Victoria Allen Liga. Sometimes it's like that. You get to forget which day of the week it is. There's a lot going on um, in life, man. It's not my fault. All right, welcome. Um, we have a lot to talk about today on Flying Solo. Unfortunately, uh, Mercy is under the weather, but we'll do our best to make sure um, that you enjoy the program. We have two very important conversations coming up, like we said, um, you don't want to miss it. So please sit back, relax. If you can, grab a cup of coffee or tea um, and then have a wonderful time on the program. Well, we start things off with a look at what's been trending. This one is not really too new, but it's still worth talking about because I think you and I can learn something about this. Before I say too much, let's roll the tape. All right, while we wait for, for, for that tape to be rolled, um, a video surfaced a couple of days on, online. Um, it, it captured the moment, the moment, some will describe it as a shocking moment. Um, two officials of the Lagos State Traffic Management Agency, popularly known as LASTMA, okay, LASTMA, uh, or like we call them in Lagos, LASTMA, <laughs> they were almost hit by a driver they were trying to apprehend. Um, you know, in Lagos, some parts of Lagos, you have a dedicated lane for the bus rapid transport uh, system. You can see that video. Um, it's courtesy Instablog, but it's user-generated user content. You can see on your screen that um, the driver of a Sienna, this is a Toyota Sienna, tried to um, well, hit one of the last one drivers when, uh, officials rather, when he tried to stop him because he was driving on the BRT lane. You can see the vehicle is behind the BRT. If you look to the right of the lane, you will see that there is a heavy traffic on that lane. You can see heavy traffic. So what the driver uh, must have been doing was to try and play a fast one with the BRT lane to get out of that traffic congestion right there and of course uh, it's against the law in legal state you're liable to be arrested and prosecuted and you either pay a fine or you spend jail time in fact your vehicle can be confiscated and auctioned like uh, some months ago we saw that legal state government was auctioning some vehicles arrested for violating traffic laws um, so what is shocking is that uh, the man attempted to hit the LASMA officials um, you know, you must spare a thought for these, these guys who do this work, either the police or last mile traffic control guys, because um, how hard is it for you to apprehend a vehicle with your bare hands? You know, nothing. You know, not, you can't even chase them. You have to stand in front of the car uh, to stop it. If somebody decides, hey, I'm going to hit you today and run away with it, and they do that, then your life is in danger. Well, according to uh, eyewitnesses, uh, the driver was to be arrested, like we said, for uh, riding or driving on that BRT lane. Um, uh, you know, some people in, 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 you know, on social media will be saying, oh, yeah, hit them. You should have hit them. You know, it, it serves them right. Oh, look at them, Ole, and all those kind of things. Because people don't like LASMA officials. Um, and they're not really popular. The public rating is quite low. You know, the public rating of LASMA officials is quite low. Um, and it's for 
reasons, the people say that they are usually harassed by officials of the Lagos State Traffic Management Agency. They're usually harassed by them. Uh, they're treated unfairly. They try to take advantage of minor issues to make money from unsuspecting or innocent uh, uh, drivers, car owners out there. Um, but I think, I think that um, another reason, and I would say this without data, but this is just my, my thought, another reason that uh, the last two officials are not popular or have a low public rating is because of the kind of way we are as a people. You know, because, I mean, you want to look at how many people out there have driver's licenses. I don't think they check all that. But you want to look at that if you want to say everybody bring a driver's license today. If you don't bring it, you, you pay a fine. I'm sure government will make more than uh, the amount of money we see in FIRS made last year. That was a record. I'm telling you. Um, people don't like obeying the laws. You know, you're made to be in lane. You don't want to queue. In fact, you don't like to queue in this country. One of the most difficult things to do is to queue. I tell you what, <laughs> I went to an African country, you know, for, for, for a vacation and I took the public, public transportation, all right, and I went to a place where I was meant to queue for, for a bus, you know, the, the, the people, the citizens were queuing. And I just majestically walked up to the front of the queue. You know, when I walked out, because you know here, you have to force your way. You know, when the bus comes, all right, you have to wait for the bus because everybody will fight at the entrance, the door of the bus to enter. You know what I'm saying? You have to push, you kick people out and force your way in. Or if you can climb through the window, you climb through the window. So I walked majestically to the front of the queue, you know, to hustle my way into that bus. It's an African country. I marched majestically. <laughs> Today, I, I went to this bus. I, I already was... I already prepared my mind as to what to do, you know, to edge people out and get in. Then I remember, oh, I'm outside the country. Oh, I don't know. And I look at people like you, and they're waiting for their turn. I saw them entering one by one. So, oh my God, I went back and, and queued, you know, took my. We don't like queuing. You go to the um, supermarket for checkout, people want to jump the queue. You go to the parking lot. People want to jump the queue. You have a space. Say you want to enter that space in the parking lot. The security or the, the you know the, uh, the assistant there said, "Okay, reverse and come and enter." As you're reversing to enter your space, somebody just drives in there and parks and switches the car, walks away. I mean, I mean, you know, we so the values. We need to work on the values. And one of the reasons I say again, LASMA officials are unpopular or have a low public rating, is because. We do not like to obey the law. We do not like to queue. We don't like to do things right. We always want to use a shortcut. I'm not saying they are innocent, but why will anyone, why will anyone, you know, say, say things like, yes, the driver should have hit the last one officials, only, and things like that. Why? It's shocking what the driver tried to do. Hit a public official after he, he, he caught you breaking the law? And then people are saying, yes, you should have hit them. Ole. I know they're not perfect. I know that they, uh, they try to make money using their uniform. I know that they try to victimize road users, drivers, car owners. I know of that. But most or more often than not, if a last one official tries to victimize you or to make money off you, it's because you have broken the law. Okay? So we, we need to also help ourselves. Because most of the problems in this country... Truly, if you look at it, it's not just about government. It's about both government and the people. If the people, at the end of the day, we decide we want to do things right, we want to do things right, definitely um, it won't be as bad as it is. Okay? It won't be as bad as it is. You have to have survival skills in this country. You want to buy fuel. You have to have survival skills. Look for a way to beat the queue. Beat the system, find somebody inside, use some petrol station politics because nobody is prepared to wait for their turn. So it's either you do something or you also lose out at the end of the day. We need to have uh, a change in our value system. If that being said, the last more officials should also, you know, stop doing the wrong thing, stop victimizing members of the public. It is really wrong, it's unacceptable, uh, and this is why their public rating is low. You need public support, you know. Uh, 
you need public um, uh, a sympathy to be able to be a successful, um, you know, public institution or agency or parastatal. It's very, very important. Very important. Uh, well, we see CCTV cameras all over, you know, Lagos State, um, installed by the state government. They have a state-of-the-art, you know, uh, monitoring center, security center. Um, so I think that with all the, of these equipment, they should be able to, uh, to catch, to apprehend, to arrest this, the owner of this vehicle, the driver, and bring him to book like we do in other parts of the world, you know, in places like Dubai, you know, Singapore, you hardly see police officers on the road. But if you like, if you want to test if they are there, uh, just go and break the law, uh, you know, break a traffic law. You just hear them knocking on your door. Of course, we've come to arrest you. You did this on so-so-and-so date, at so-so-and-so time, on so-so-and-so street. Please follow us, okay? So that is what we'd like to see. Um, and uh, please, if you are the driver, you have to turn yourself in. I know you won't, <laughs> but you have to turn yourself in because what you did is totally condemnable. It's shocking, and it shouldn't happen. What if you had hit the, the driver? It's, it shouldn't happen at all. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, this is a more political. Uh, President Buhari uh, was in Lagos on Monday and Tuesday. I was a bit confused because um, he, uh, he left... Lagos on Monday uh, to go to Senegal is what I heard, you know, to go to Senegal. So I thought maybe he, that was the end of the trip. Don't forget on Monday he commissioned the uh, largest, the biggest deep sea port in Nigeria. The only deep sea port from what I hear in the country, the Lekki deep sea port. Um, he also commissioned a rice mill, the largest rice mill in Africa um, as well. And then he also commissioned um, an MRS lubricant factory. So uh, this is where the projects are commissioned on Monday. Uh, well, on Tuesday, the president was back to commission uh, the Blue Rail Line. All right, the Blue Rail Line. This is uh, the first phase of that Blue Line that will take the traffic congestion in Lagos State and discard it in the dustbin of history and discard it in the dustbin of history. Um, we can also see that the president, as you can see on your screen, also commissioned the iconic, um, and this is very, very interesting one, uh, J. Randall Center, J. Randall Center for Yoruba Culture and History in Lagos. I think we'll listen to a bit of what the president said. Can we roll the tape and just listen to a bit of what he said? All right, nothing much there to hear from the president, but um, the John Randall Center for History, Yoruba Culture, uh, or for Yoruba Culture and History, uh, is, is a very important project that the uh, Lagos State Government says fits into its urban regeneration project at the heart of Lagos Island, which is a very important part of Lagos. It's close to my heart. Lagos Island is close to my heart for reasons maybe one day we might want to discuss. But I feel that that place has been neglected by government it's a very important part of Lagos, and we need to see government, you know, reviving uh, uh, Lagos Island. Uh, he was accompanied by his host, the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Songwo Lu, as well um, as other dignitaries uh, who were part of that commissioning. Apart from that, well, the, the John Randall Center will um, aim to engage the public. It's a very interesting place that I would uh, like to visit now. It's been commissioned. I think I should go there on the weekend and uh, have a look. But it's said to be the first of many initiatives aimed at the preservation of uh, the heritage of the Yoruba uh, through the celebration and preservation of history and culture, uh, the regeneration of decades of old public green uh, space, public recreation facilities, and the restoration of civic pride. Uh, this is what the governor of Lagos has said in the past. He says Onikon will be the catalyst for a vibrant and tourist-friendly quarter in the heart of Lagos Island. 
that is very, very, very welcome. I mean, there's a lot of history on Lagos Island. Let me say it the way I would say it so it would, it would sink in. There is a lot of history on Lagos Island, though. A lot of history. And this history has been left to, to dilapidate. All right? To dilapidate. It's, it's very important. The, Lagos Island needs to be restored. You know, that is the, the central business district of Lagos. Not Lekki Phase 1. Not Lekki Phase 1. Lekki Phase 1 is, is residential. Not Victoria Island. Victoria Island is residential. The central business district of Lagos is where you have Lagos Island, you know. And you can see that the, the banks, the, the, the government, you know, parasitals all started from there. Now what you have in Lagos Island mostly is that, um, you know, the buildings, the skyscrapers, the high-rise buildings have been turned to markets. Markets where people sell clothes. They sell, sell shirts, jeans, you know, shoes, um, ties, socks. It's been turned to market, and, and it, it's an eyesore. There are places in Lagos Island that qualify to be Nigeria's Times Square. So kudos to the Lagos State government for, and the governor of Lagos State for having the idea to turn Oniko, all right, to the Catalyst. So make it the Catalyst for a vibrant and tourist-friendly quarter in the heart of Lagos Island. But you see, it has to go beyond that. Lagos Island needs to be restored. You see where this, this centre is? If care is not taken, and I think, I think the government is doing well to make sure that those stouts and street traders, you know, and urchins and all those hangers around are not in this part of Lagos. But it's so close to the beginning of the chaos you have in Lagos Island. I've seen people sell things in the night around that John Randall Center. I've seen it with my eyes. So they put tables to sell uh, uh, bitters and all those kind of things. Okay? They put tables at night. So it's very important. It's very important. I mean, you can take a look at, for instance, um, the Tafawa Balewa Square. You know, history there? <laughs> the history there, Nigeria's, I think, first parliament or previous former parliament is there. And there's a lot of history in, in that in that area all right all around Tafabla West Square you go through through to uh, King's College and all those places it's an eyesore today it's an eyesore so Lagos State government needs to embark on the Lagos Island restoration project okay the Lagos Island restoration project where they restore the beauty of Lagos Island so it's no longer a place that is associated with with, with area boys, with Agbero, Agbero, always fighting and shooting and killing themselves. Where, you know, people can, the banks can go back there. All right? I know they're still there, but they are more in Victoria Island. All right? Let the banks go back there. Let the corporates go back there. You know, let all the institutions, the businesses go back there. Let the international um, investors go back there. Okay, get the Agbero off, get, get and let the place resemble, you know, Manhattan, resembles Times Square and all those places. It's very important. Because um, you look at VI, the road network is not one for, you know, for, you know, for business. It's residential. It's residential. But look at, it's, it's being discarded. The master plan, I don't know. And you have skyscrapers in VI because they can't stay there. So it's very important. But kudos to the government of Lagos State for this initiative. The John Randall Center looks really beautiful. You know, I used to, you know, pass, I pass almost every day. And I used to wonder, what, what, what are they building here? Or what are they renovating here? Um, so it's very important. Uh, Dr. John Randall uh, was a prominent Lagosian. And he built a public swimming pool in 1928 uh, on King, at King George V Park, later to become the Love Garden. A much loved recreational area and i can imagine you know, most times i i take a walk or drive around the lagos island area i begin to imagine how it was you know in the 60s and 70s some of those areas where you know public institutions were where the seat of of government was the nigerian parliament i i you know you look at all these other places i i, I begin to wonder what it was like 
because most of these streets are historical. Most of them are not nothing to, to write home about. It's really sad, you know. So, so it's great. So John Randall, Dr. John Randall, was a prominent Lagosian, uh, and he built a public swimming pool all right, in 1928 uh, at the King George V Park, which later became known as Love Garden. Uh, it was a loved, much loved recreational area. And now this grand gesture was inspired by the refusal of the British colonial office um, to build a swimming pool for Lagosians to learn how to swim. And on completion, the pool and the garden of the pool and the garden, Dr. John Randall handed uh, over the facilities to the Lagos Town Council with a maintenance purse to ensure its upkeep. It's very interesting, lots of history there. Uh, and I just want to encourage you, you know, go out there and take a look at it. Uh, and also just take your family there and all that. I'm so happy, really. I am. I am. I am. Um, anyway, let's move on to the next. Um, I think we were done. Yeah, we're done, right? Okay. Um, so we'll take a break. <laughs> we'll take a break. And uh, when we come back, we'll take a look at what the people say today. My name is Kofi Bartels. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa.